Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on participation constraints in DBMS. At first, let's see what are all the topics that we are going to see in this presentation. We will be recapturing mapping cardinality in ER diagram and then we will be understanding about the participation constraints in DBMS with the two types. At first, let's start with the mapping cardinality in ER diagram. When we talk about mapping cardinality, we know mapping cardinality is also referred as cardinality ratio or cardinality number. It expresses the number of entities to which another entity can be associated. We know there are four types of mapping cardinality. Number one, one to one. Number two, one to many. Number three, many to one. And number four, many to many. We have already seen about this elaborately. In case you are watching this lecture directly, in order to understand participation constraints, we need the basics of mapping cardinality. Hence, I would request you to visit my previous lectures titled Mapping Cardinality and Mapping Cardinality in ER Diagram for better understanding. How these four types are represented in ER diagrams? Here it is. This is how we represent the one-to-one -one mapping cardinality. Can you see? The numbers are here. Coming to the second one, this is one-to-many. The third one is many-to-one. And the last one is many-to-many. -many. Now let's focus on participation constraints. What is this participation constraint? Participation constraint defines whether Every entity on one side of a relationship must be related to an entity on the other side or if it is optional. This is what exactly participation constraints is. Don't worry, I am going to give you an example shortly. That time you will be able to understand things. In other words, it is the minimum and the maximum participation of the entities. Let's see an example. In this example, we can see there are two relations, relation 1 and we have relation 2. Relation has some columns or attributes. Similarly, relation 2 also has some columns or attributes. Obviously, these two relations are related with the help of this relationship. Now, what we are seeing here is we have a participation constraint that is represented here. In this example, we have two types of participation constraints. Here is a total participation constraint and here is a partial participation constraint. So what we understand from this is, this participation constraints, it defines whether every entity on one side, this is an entity on one side of a relationship. Obviously, this is the relationship. So one side of the relationship, how it is related with the other side of the relationship. That is what this definition says. It defines whether every entity on one side of a relationship must be related to an entity on the other side or if it is optional. In this case, we have two kinds of participation constraint. Here is total, here is partial. Let me elaborate on this. Talking about the types of participation constraints, we have two types. Number one, the total participation and number two, the partial participation. Before stepping into the total participation and partial participation, I would like to bring in a slide from one of the previous lectures, the mapping cardinality, where we have dealt with four types of mapping cardinality, one to one, one to many, many to one, and many to many. Let me take an example of one to one. What does one to one mapping cardinality mean? Let's take the example. There are two entity sets, entity set A, and entity set B. How they are related? In this example, an entity in entity set A is associated with at most one entity in entity set B, then it is one to one. If you see the example, it's very clear that the entity in this entity set A is associated with one entity, exactly one entity in entity set B. And at the same time, entity set B is also associated with exactly one entity with entity set A. Hence, it is one-to-one -one mapping cardinality. What about participation constraint? That's what I'm going to tell you now. The participation constraint here is the participation of B in this relationship set 
is a total participation. Can you see here? All the entity sets are participating in the relationship. So, if you talk about entity set B, the participation of B in relationship set is a total participation. Whereas, the participation of A in this relationship set is a partial participation because there are some which are participating, there are some which are not participating. As far as B is concerned, it's a total participation. As far as A is concerned, it is a partial participation. Now let me elaborate on the first type of participation constraint which is the total participation. What does total participation mean? As mentioned earlier, where each entity is involved in the relationship. So each entity will be involving in the relationship set. Alright, if each entity is involved in the relationship set, then it is a total participation, that's fine. How to represent this? Total participation is represented by double lines. Let me show you an example here. There are two entities, employee and department. You can see employee has some attributes. Similarly, department also has some attributes. And the relationship between employee and department is works in. Employee works in this particular department. Now, every employee will be definitely belonging to a department. So, the relationship from employee's perspective to the department relationship is a total participation. Any employee, if you take, that particular employee will be belonging to a particular department. So, obviously, this is total participation. You can see here. So, from employee's perspective, it's a total participation. What about department? There can be a department that may not have any employees in that department. Maybe think about the scenario, a newly created department. In that case, the department entity exists without an employee. So, department will be participating in this relationship as a partial participation. So, here is the total participation. Here is the partial participation. Anyway, let's see the theoretical part about the partial participation. As we know, the partial participation means not all entities are involved in the relationship. And we also know how it is represented. It is represented by single lines. The same example. Here it is partial participation. Here, full participation. I hope things are clear to you. Before we see the homework question, I would like to give you another example. Let's take student and instructor entities. We expect every student entity to be related with at least one instructor through advisor relationship. So, every student will have an advisor. Who is an advisor? An instructor is an advisor. So, every student entity to be related with at least one instructor through the advisor relationship is an example of total participation. However, it is possible that not all instructors are advisors. We may be having instructors who can teach, but they might have not taken the responsibility of an advisor. So, in this case, student entity has full participation or total participation, but instructors have partial participation on the advisor relationship. Let's now see the homework question. You can see student entity and course entity. What is the relationship? Students obviously enroll the courses. Student entity has some attributes. Course relation also has some attribute. The question is, looking at this diagram, identify the total and the partial participation of these two entities, student entity and the course entity. And please post your answers in the comment section what you understood about the partial and the total participation in this diagram. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.